Hello, YouTube. You know, I like this voice synthesizer so much, it makes me want to sing. If I were a rich man, yada da 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 all day long I'd diddy diddy hum, if I were a wealthy man. I wouldn't have to work hard, yada da 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 if I were a diddy diddy rich, idle diddle, diddle diddle, man. On second thought, this voice synthesizer actually really sucks. I'm going to go back to using my real voice now. Hello, this is a rebuttal for the creationist video Darwin's Evolution Theory Disproved by Science. Actually, the name of the video is Darwin's Evolution Theory Disproved with Science! One really wonders why they felt the need not only to put it in all caps, but also to follow it up with not one, but twelve exclamation points. Until Darwin, many scientists were in agreement with the biblical account that animals produce after their own kind. The scientific account, which predates Darwin and continues to this day, is that animals produce more of their own species. This has not changed. But as the evolutionary perspective was given more authority... Science doesn't work by authority. Scientists were convinced by the evidence. Now we are told that the way evolution proceeds is damages due to some outside influence like cosmic rays caused the cell to make mistakes. We call those mutations. And here we are now, the product of billions of mistakes. They only mentioned one of many forms of mutation and didn't mention natural selection at all. It's natural selection that takes these variances and moves them forward. Scientists know the genetic code prevents one life form from changing into another kind. We know nothing of the kind. The word kind is a made-up creationist word that they can never land on a single definition for. Again, they believe this in spite of the observable evidence that no new species has ever resulted from a mutation. There are lots of examples of new species forming from combinations of mutations and natural selection. Mutations are almost always harmful. Most mutations are completely neutral. If evolution has really occurred, we ought to be able to see the evidence in the fossil record. After all, that's the record of the past. But if we look at that fossil record carefully, we see that there are no recorded instances of one type of an animal ever changing into another. There are no transitional forms. There are tons of transitional forms. The creationists just stick their heads in the sand over this issue. We ought to see cats, and we ought to see dogs, and we ought to see cogs and dats. No, we shouldn't, because dogs and cats are on two separate branches. You don't have species moving from one branch to another. During their interviews, several of these prominent scientists contradicted themselves, admitting that no transitional forms had been found, and proceeded to offer excuses for the lack of evidence. The uh, telonic record is incomplete. Uh, it's incomplete because of erosion that has eroded things away. One of the things that also uh, makes it a little more difficult in the fossil record is the rapidity with which uh, evolution acts in very s short bursts. Um, it doesn't leave many transitional forms behind. Admitting that no transitional forms had been found. It doesn't leave many transitional forms behind. Archaeopteryx, classified today by many paleontologists as a true bird, not a reptile bird intermediary, Archaeopteryx is classed as an archosaur, a class that includes birds and other reptiles such as crocodiles. Recently, uh, another bird has been found dated by evolutionists to be 75 million years older than, than Archaeopteryx. There couldn't have been any birds 75 million years before Archaeopteryx because the dinosaurs didn't even die out until 65 million years before the present. Uh, reptiles are supposed to have converted their scales into feathers. Now, a scale in a reptile is nothing but a fold in the skin. Now, how in the world could a fold in the skin have ever been frayed out into the intricate design of a feather? Argument from incredulity. There's never been anything found intermediate between the fold in the reptile skin and the feather of a bird. 
Many dinosaurs with rudimentary feathers have been found, some of them 70 million years older than Tyrannosaurus rex. In the evolution of flying creatures, uh, an animal's forelimb, good for walking or climbing, must have gradually changed into a wing. We have never found any fossils that show this in-between structure. These traits are seen in the same dinosaurs I just mentioned. Besides, the arms of T-Rex were completely useless, and there are other analogs in many other flightless birds still alive today. I suspect that such a creature, long before he had a good wing, had a lousy forelimb, and he could neither have walked nor flown. You mean, just like T-Rex? I'm very concerned about the way our museums present evolution as though it were a proven fact. It is proven. In fact, evolution is better supported than even gravity. And actually, false information is being presented. The only false information I see is in stupid creationist videos like this one. The November 1980 edition of Science Digest shows a drawing of a whale with legs as an evolutionary link between whales and cows. But the only fossil evidence for this mythological transition is a skull and several teeth, no leg bones. Lots of transitionals between land vertebrates and whales have been found, and yes, they include the leg bones. Not only that, but modern atavisms of leg bones have been found in many modern whales, also confirming this. You're only limited by the credulity of your audience and your own imagination in making up these stories of what changed into what and what the intermediate forms were. Predictions of transitionals are testable, and even if you don't have fossil one, they're fully testable by the genetic record, which lays out one and only one way it could have happened. When asked to come up with evidence that evolution really has taken place, evolutionists will frequently bring up very minor changes. Creationists just don't seem to have the intelligence to understand that minor changes are all that's required for evolution, as long as you have enough time for the minor changes to accumulate in the major changes. They just don't understand how, if you get enough inches together, they turn into a mile. Evolutionists should know better. These small changes are totally compatible with the creation understanding of things. See, here's the problem. Creationists don't understand things. They don't understand, for example, that in order to keep these inches from becoming miles, they need a mechanism to prevent it from happening. How do you prevent these small accumulated changes from making big differences? Without a mechanism, you have nothing to stand on, and they don't have one. What we need to see is major changes, some type of an animal changing into another type of an animal, and this we do not see. They're just wrong. We see it time and time again. Creationists don't try to refute the data that's out there. They just deny that it even exists.